Goosebumps is rated Y7 because it may be too spooky for kids under seven. Hello, Goosebumps fans. It's been a long while, and well, Pop Arena did another video, and we're now at the differences between the book and the episode of the Phantom in the Auditorium. This is one of the ones that I actually had as a kid. I had three of them that actually cursed my life, and I had to get rid of them. This was another one. The freaking cover freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> so I eventually gave it to a girl named Regina, and I don't regret it whatsoever. Even though I think her life got wrecked. So, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. Here's what happened in the book version. So the book version, they said that it is based upon a book that they found the play is based upon a book that they found a library basement 72 years ago and they actually tried to do it and well a kid vanished so here's the two main guys we got two main characters we got brooke rogers or just brooke and zeke which they told us his name in those in the episode um, i'm going by what they said in episode apparently they gave him last names or the last names are actually in a book i'm not sure so anyways here is what's going on with zeke and brooke they both love horror they both love pranks and they both love to be silly along with actually loving theater then we got tiffany not tiffany my gosh tina powell and tina powell is brooke's understudy she's also one of the popular girls kind of and we got the teacher named miss walker not walker texas ranger just miss walker so she actually she is the one the teacher is the one who tells them about the legend and shows the gimmick of the trap door in the episode there's a little bit of a difference so we'll get to that in a minute and in the in the book it turns out that the teacher actually falls in the trap door so she actually had a little doozy of a fall but i think she's okay just like captain man i'm okay so what they did is after school and after practice, Brooke and Zeke actually went and played with the trap door and they stumbled upon a basement area that they never knew about. And they found the controls that was in the basement and got back up. Kind of the same thing as the episode, except the episode, I think the trap door has a mind of its own somehow. We'll try to figure that out in a minute. <laughs> But it turns out someone's actually up there with them, and it's Emil, the janitor. Emil, the janitor. What, what was it? Nanny, the janitor <laughs> from Dexter's Laboratory? I wish they would have. I wish he would have went with that, but I think technically Emil, the janitor, predates Yanny, the janitor, which I love that character. That character is so damn funny. So anyways, he has baggy gray pants, and he has a little torn thing on his sweats, gray sweatshirt. Let's try to remember what he was in a TV show. Did he? In a TV show, no, he actually had a janitor costume on. Somewhat. So yeah, and he actually is a little person. He's still supposed to be small for his stature. They didn't go for that, so, yep. And it most likely would have been freaking damn hard to find someone like that, too. And plus, he had a purple scar. No, you didn't have a purple scar in the episode, either. <laughs> so, okay. Within next day, we get Brian, the new kid. He's not into horror, but Brooke and Zeke actually took him under his wing, and they befriended him. And then, all of a sudden, Brooke actually gets some threatening notes in her locker. And, of course, you know, it is home sweet home. Don't leave my, stay away from my home sweet home, Asmerelda. And it's like, okay, so you don't know her real name? I mean, you know, that's kind of like, yes, it plays up the whole, the phantom is going after you. But it's like, really? You couldn't actually overhear her name, dude? Seriously? So, yeah, some guy in a phantom costume, he actually grabs Brooke and tells her, just, go away, go away. And then it turns out that Emil, because it was the teacher, it's the teacher. In the episode, they do something, a little step it up a notch. But in this one, it was the teacher who said, we don't have a janitor. So you don't have a night janitor or you don't have a janitor, period. If you don't have a janitor, period, oh, good Lord. <laughs> just like what Paparina said, oh, good Lord. But I'm pretty sure she might have just said we didn't have a night janitor. Hopefully that's what she said. So we find out Emil is a liar. And then we have Brooke, Zeke, and Brian actually investigates. 
and they found a note that was written in red paint on the set and ryan brian is the set designer so why the hell would he do it and well miss walker actually catches them sneaking in the freaking place and they try to admit their innocence they did but sadly they followed followed the red trail of paint and it went all the way to zeke's freaking locker Good question. How do I mean the Phantom? Yes, I get it. The Phantom. Ooh, he's able to have those powers, those gayish powers. Sorry, I'm just quoting from Homer Simpson, that one episode. Ooh, I'm the gayest villain ever. <laughs> oh my gosh, Homer, I love you. So, because of that, Zeke is grounded, and Paparina didn't even mention this: the fact that he got kicked out of the play, so no play for him, and the kids were sent home. Tina actually was seen in the background biking away from the scene, so it's like, hmm, Tina. Even though it kind of is messed up being like, oh, why in the world you're framing Zeke? I mean, yes, Brooke is her friend. I mean, Zeke is Brooke's friend, but it doesn't help you framing him. You technically should be framing her. I mean, you are her understudy, but for some reason, screwing over the... Yeah, it's getting pretty stupid, technically. Of course, you don't know, it kind of might be the Phantom, anyways. So, anyways, they actually went to Zeke's home, Brooke and R Brian. And Zeke actually has a black dog named Buster, and Buster does not like Ryan. I mean, Brian. Yeah, um, I thought he said Bri Ryan, and I wrote Ryan, but his name is Brian, so... Again, if I don't correct myself, dang it. <laughs> Anyways, they actually decided to return. All three of them returned to the basement of the school and search around. They found a mystery room and it looks like someone's actually living there. They noticed that there's some cornflakes that hasn't turned soggy. So Emil turns out to be a homeless guy and he admits everything. Yes, I put the notes in your locker. Yes, I painted on the set. I did everything. And I could have got away with it if it weren't for you damn kids. <laughs> so Zeke's parents were called. The police were called to. Emil was able to actually run for it. So unlike all the freaking bad guys of Scooby-Doo, for the first time ever, this guy actually was able to run away if this was Scooby in the gang. Even though technically Fred would have already set a trap and he would have got caught. <laughs> so anyway, Zeke was cleared of all charges. He got to go back into play. The play happens. And then the Phantom shows up and he ablets lines and it looks like it wasn't Zeke at all. And it turns out that before the whole entire place started, though, 72 years ago, he fell through that trap door and died and they couldn't find his body for some reason. How does that work? <laughs> yeah. Um, how does that work? I mean, okay. We're going to have to talk about that in another video. I think we're going to have three videos included from this video. We got to talk about what the freak happened to his body. But anyways, so Brooke actually tries to reveal him, reveal the phantom, and he just falls and disappears on the floor. She didn't actually take off his mask. Or at least that's what Paparina says. And audience loved it. Zeke actually found a extra costume he able to put on and... Broken Zeke actually finds an old flyer for the play 72 years ago, and it was Brian who was supposed to have been the Phantom. Dun, 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 dun. Anyways, now it's time for the episode. The episode is a bit flashy. They decide to be kind of flashy when it comes to the Phantom, you know? And it's kind of stagey like flashy, which means kind of actually fits in the theme of being theatrical. So... Brooke, yeah, this is definitely not in the book, but Brooke, oh my gosh, it rhymed. Well, anyways, Brooke actually has a nightmare of future sight somehow, and she actually has a nightmare of everything that's going to come to pass when it comes to that night where the play is going to happen. Well, actually, I think she has a future sight of all the events about to happen, which means she didn't have any way to stop it, but, well, she had those flashes. So we have a group reading of the whole entire script and Corey, which wasn't mentioned in the book, they decided to actually add Corey, who actually is playing as Asmerelda's father. So we got a another character with a name. So that's good. And Tina actually plays. Oh yeah, Tina actually is the one who 
in the book, it was the teacher who talks about the legend and everything. And this one is actually Tina who actually says, this play is cursed. My grandfather told me this. He actually went to the school 72 years ago. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. He went to the school 72 years ago. He was at high school. So that means that during the play, even 14 to 17 years ago, let's look at this. So that means that her grandfather would either be 87 years old or 89 years old damn <laughs> i mean how can you actually believe this guy he's that old i mean you would figure it'll be like ramblings of the old man but considering granddaughter or grandfather the grandchildren usually have the ears the grandfathers the grandparents usually have the ears of the grandchildren so it does kind of pan out but on the other hand there's many other who would have actually like the parents if they did have them casted in this whole episode would actually be like oh it's just her grandfather rambling some bull crap i mean he's old i mean eventually it gets to the point of where he actually thinks of stuff that didn't actually happen and crap anyways we have someone who's peeking so they actually have like some decent peaking stuff and peaking scenes where it's like someone's out there but this one actually is a little bit of faker most of them are fakers so someone's out there teen actually tells everything about the missing boy she adds that in there a fact that apparently in this version the police were called and the body wasn't found in the book version they didn't even mention about police actually trying to look for it for him so they did try to play again a few years later and the ghost appeared so unlike the book 72 years ago they do it apparently there's some kind of predate before this 72 years hiatus that they tried it one more time and then the ghost showed up and they're like oh fuck stop the presence so okay sure why not <laughs> there's more peeking at glove hand this time actually the person who's doing this and gets brooke is zeke and the teacher comes in and teen actually dislikes the place happening because of grandfather the real reading group reading actually begins brooke actually asks why in the world is she falling in love with this guy if she kit gets kidnapped by him and of course the teacher actually answers by saying the mystery and i'm pretty sure that book wise they he didn't actually tell us exactly what happened with the whole entire play so in the play it turns out the boyfriend actually kills the phantom in the play which I guess that happens in Phantom of the Opera too, but I don't know, because I never saw it, only heard the music. Well, at least this song, I'm parodying of it, because that's the only thing I know of the song and of the play too. Ba -do -do -do. That's all I know. <laughs> okay, let's see. Corey actually is being lowered into the trap door. So Corey, it seems that the crazy part about this episode is that they play down the friendship of Brooke and Zeke. Instead, she seems more actually concerned for Corey than actually Zeke, even though I do kind of, she does seem like a friend, but it seems like she might actually have a thing for Corey a little bit. But other hand, it kind of is the whole ron weasley effect where well, ron weasley friendship effect where they kind of actually played down the friendship and it seems like they kind of actually kind of random like yeah they're classmates and i bet that's it and because they didn't establish what in the book it says love horror love pranking each other love being silly in this episode they don't actually show any of that actually being established which means his pranks actually are kind of what the frick man it's like, what the frick, man? Because <laughs> they don't actually establish that they're friends or anything. No high five, no sub or anything. Well, anyways, let's see. Maintenance man. Okay, so the trap door, apparently, they, unlike the book that they're like, well, Paparino was like, dude, y'all guys haven't used the trap door in 72 years, man? That's freaking hell violations and bull crap. While in this episode, they actually decided to write in a little bit that the maintenance man is working on the trap door. That's why the teacher's like, stay away from the trap door. The maintenance man's still working on it. So they add it in the maintenance man. See, look at it. The writers are kind of smart. And the teacher actually wants them to stay away. Like I said, more flashy, flashy. This time, someone else, not Zeke. The teacher infos them to make sure that it's safe because of maintenance man, blah, 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 blah. And the phantom actually is up there in the rafters. We see somebody up there in the rafters. <laughs> what the frick? Then they're... Rehearsal's over. Brooke and Zeke actually checks the trap door. 
And of course they see a basement and well, she does a freaking Velma move where my glasses, where in the world are my glasses? <laughs> uh, Zeke actually seemed to be missing, but he's not. He actually found the glasses and scared her a little bit. Of course, this is a dire moment and technically, yeah, she he kind of seems like a jerk right now. He doesn't actually seem like a friend pulling a prank or something. Yeah, a little bit of a jerk because it doesn't seem like they're actually truly our friends like in the book. And apparently there's a basement basement. So they know that this leads to a basement, but it turns out that there's an extra layer of basement that they haven't seen before. Or maybe I heard wrong. I'm not sure. I think I didn't hear wrong. I think they said there was a basement basement. So anyways, there is a rat scare and then they go back up and it turns out that the freaking trap door stuck a little bit halfway. So Zeke actually crawls up with Brooke's help and then he doesn't help Brooke out. And then the meal shows up, the night janitor and the trap door. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, how do you know about a trap door? Stay away from it, he says. Stay away. And then we get to the next day, and then Brian shows up. Apparently, he came up from up north. He wished he was part of this play. He wished he came in time. But, well, it looks like Tiffany, I mean, Tina likes Brian. Well, it's a, I don't know. It seems like she's a bossy girlfriend if she actually does like him. So, yeah, she likes Brian, and Brooke actually goes to the rehearsal with Corey. Tina actually bosses Brian around because freak him. Oh, wait, sorry. I'm skipping. Oh, my gosh, I'm skipping. Sorry. I just pulled a freaking O's. Mystery Man is stalking her. Brooke gets the note and a skull mask. Of course, it says, stay away, Esmeralda. Stay away. And Mr. Levi, who is the mystery person, who turns out to be a teacher, was actually making sure that actually Brooke is... What's Brooke doing? You know, Brooke getting her freaking script and crap. So whatever. Anyways, Brooke actually goes to Zeke and she confronts him and he says, I didn't do it. I think the Phantom did. And then rehearsing at night. Yeah, you know, she was rehearsing at night in her room. So mixing up instead of in a book where Zeke actually gets to have his own house and his room. Well, actually just on his house. Instead, Brooke actually gets to have her house. She gets to have her own room. And, well, crazy enough, the Phantom shows up. Well, Zeke actually shows up in his costume in her bedroom. What the frick, dude? <laughs> what the frick? Scaring the crap out of her. <laughs> what the frick? Well, anyways, it looks like Tina might have actually sabotaged something. Oh, wait, sorry. The next day, Tina again. Yep. So Tina actually talks about, oh, my gosh, this place is cursed. We need to stop this play at once. And then Tina actually bosses Brian around making sure he does his set design stuff. Brooke actually rehearses with Corey. This is where I actually skipped. Tina might have actually sabotaged, but no, it was actually the Phantom. Well, actually not really even the Phantom. And then scenery falls almost on Brooke. It's like, whoa. So you're telling me some of the stuff that you cut from many episodes, like for instance, be careful what you wish for, where she was supposed to actually get hurt a little bit. You cut that scene. Apparently, this scene where you have scenery falling down from the freaking damn um ceiling onto her and she has to dodge it. That that's deserved to be written in. What the heck, guys? What the heck? So you guys can take chances or you can't take chances. Which one is it? I don't like it when you guys actually change stuff. Well, actually. I'm fine with changing stuff. I just don't like it, the fact that you actually decided to get rid of some of the stuff that kind of actually might be harmful to the actor or actress. It's like, find a nicer way to do it. Don't just cut it out, period. Well, anyways, let's see. Lost my place a little bit. So there's red paint on the scenery that fell. And of course, it said the usual thing of staying away, blah, 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 blah. The teacher actually accuses Zeke, and Zeke actually was at a dentist appointment. He just walked in, so technically the teacher looks like an idiot at this point, because technically she should kind of know where her students are, and you kind of would figure that the parents would make sure she knows he's going to be a little late. He has a dentist appointment, so she tries to actually says she, you did it, you did it. So since you did it, well, guess what? You're kicked out. You're kicked out of the play. It's like what the frick, really? Well, actually, first things first, it was the whole Tina finds the paint trail. Unlike in the book, all three of them actually follow the paint trail. This time, Tina finds the paint trail, and they all follow to Zeke's, of course, Zeke's um, 
locker. And as a frame up, of course, like the book, Brooke defends, there is a janitor in the book. I mean, in this episode, the janitor was named Mr. Johnson. Okay. Mr. Johnson. So the teacher actually kicks Zeke out and there's one more, one more at ease and then there's no play at all. Brooke chats with Zeke and Brian. Oh yeah, like I said, Mr. Johnson is the janitor. Emil is exposed. He's like, there's no night janitor. There's only me, Mr. Johnson. It's like, what the frick? <laughs> so they return to check at night. The police actually was thought to be called. And it's like, Brooke's like, we should call the police. And it's like, no, no, we shouldn't do that. Well, at least that's what Zeke says. And they go down. Brooke actually figures Emil is a ghost. And well, the trap door apparently has a mind of its own because this is the second time where it actually moves by itself without the button being pressed. They find a room. The Phantom is there. Yeah, so Emil actually dresses the Phantom and scaring the crap out of him. They run. Brooke actually is caught. Wow, Zeke, this is the second time you just left Brooke there. Are you actually your friend or what? So Mr. Levy is there. Emil actually runs for it. The officers, yeah, so they call the officers and the officer says, uh, I think he was actually a freaking homeless man and he did all that crap that you guys think Zeke did and, well, we didn't catch him. <laughs> and apparently the reason why the teachers were there is because of a staff meeting. So Zeke actually is clear of all charges. We get to the play. Zeke tries, you know, we get to play. The play happens like usual. Then we get to the part of where Zeke has to come up from the trap door. He tries to hit the trap door. The trap door doesn't move. He tries his hardest and then whack. So he actually gets hit in the back of the head. <laughs> Unlike in a book, which I think Pop Brina didn't tell us what happened. I think the episode, they actually had to add something of why Zeke didn't show up. So, yeah, it's kind of funny. It's like in a book, it's like, ooh, what happened to Zeke? Yeah, or maybe he missed that part of where he got bluntly hit in the back of the head. <laughs> so anyways, it, Zeke actually is not there. Here's the Phantom. He ad-libs like in a book. And Tina and Corey, we get a shot of them both being like, what the fuck is going on? I'm freaking out here. Especially Tina, because Tina's like 72 years. And he's like, oh my gosh. And most likely she kind of got Corey thinking that yes the grandpa's right so she actually did get to unmask pull his mask off and then he fell to the floor and disappeared and then well zeke was up on, so everyone clapped and said yay that's awesome so, so the trap door finally goes up and zeke is right there laying down on the floor on the trap door so zeke actually got knocked the out and then we find out what he was hit by which is a 1932 yearbook and well everyone's applause everyone's a group bow and then well they actually flip the pages and they find that the flyer that is in the book is in the actual yearbook page and it was revealed that brooke actually revealed to zeke that brian was the phantom and that's where they ended there you go so as you can see they definitely changed stuff from the actual book to episode yeah this is like a major change especially putting in some futuristic precognition stuff but at least they added a janitor they added the uh, maintenance stuff so when it comes to book versus episode i mean they both are actually different entities that you can actually enjoy both it's like yeah you definitely enjoy both and well there you go. Stay tuned for the next three to actually it's been sprouted from this one book episode.